CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. All right. So I'm just going to go down the line here and uh, see who we have here. So uh, Mike, here. you are. Uh, Leslie, in the flesh. Nice to see you. Our meetings are in the flesh. I know. Now, I'm just saying it's nice to see you. I know. No. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Joe Barr, I just got an email. I think he may try to join virtually, but he was traveling, so he may not be able to make it. Um, Jill is here. No? Yep. Um, Natasha? Yep. Marvin? Yes. Yep. Uh, Jim? Here. And then Joe Conley? Oh, oh, oh. Baby? We yeah. need the baby's name. Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And David Morgan. Oh, look at her. So cute. Is she going to speak, Joe? Oh, okay. <laughs> so I am going to be managing a couple of things here. I know. So, it's um, so, it's so it looks like we've got a quorum. Excellent. Um, are we recording? We are recording. Okay. Yeah. So, pretty much on time. This is the April 2nd, 2024 meeting of the Artificial Tourist Study Committee. It is our 14th meeting, uh, 14th public meeting, and uh, I'm very happy about it. I told the select board I think we're probably going to finish at about the 15 mark, which uh, I've been on committees for a whole year that don't meet that often. So um, kudos to everyone. And it's great to see everyone in person for the first time. Um, so we've got a lot on the agenda. So I'll well jump into it. The first item is down the roll. So the first item is the minutes. So I definitely at least had one correction. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have about four or five, but, yeah. but first I do want to say, I mean, this was a Herculean effort in a very short time for you, <laughs> Natasha, so. Um, I didn't have my usual um, editor, so it might show. But you know what? <laughs> I mean, often we have minutes that don't tell you much, yeah. and these minutes were, if you didn't go to the meeting and you weren't able to watch the video, I think you get a very, very good sense of meeting. Maybe too good a sense yeah. of meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe you start and then sure. we can go. We yeah. go around, see, and then go to the phones. Yeah, so I did try really hard to capture everything, but, um, you know, like I said, you did it was, a great job. Well, it, it, was, it was a crazy effort. And actually, um, before you do anything, folks who are remote hear us. Guess how David and Joe, um, I did check in with both of them. They could hear us. Okay. And the other folks that are on here, um, Susan Stamp, okay. Susan Kaplan, Phil, um, I'm assuming that all of, they, all of them can hear us. Um, and at some point in the meeting, I think if they wanted to um, speak over this hand, would probably work. Perfect. Okay. Where would you see that right hand? I'll see it over here. You'll see it. Okay. Yes. Because we don't see anything. No. And I'm wondering if um, I'll yeah. see if I can play around to get the, the change up here. But uh, yeah, I can see it on this crazy thing. <laughs> so I'm just this down. That's right. Okay. Um, so the first thing that I notice, and then this is just me, under importance of field maintenance, organic and non-organic, um, I use elevate instead of alleviate. Um, so I will make Forgive. that correction. <laughs> um, and I'm open to any other. I'll go last. Okay. Um, Mike? Okay. I didn't have any specifics. Thanks, Mike. All right. Yeah, I didn't have anything specific. Minutes, well, I had something for you, actually. Well, good. Because uh, <laughs> I, I didn't. Um, there was... You'll see. You'll see what the one I have that you that you were correct. I, um, <laughs> Jill? Uh, okay, I'll go in order. So I may, I may take a minute to find okay. these. I wrote things down sort of rapidly. So... I know. Um, yeah. Minutes. Oh, yeah, I can. Um, yes, I can. I can. I know. I'm used to doing the Give me 10 seconds. Yeah. I'm a little out of sorts uh, because I'm, I'm running a couple of different devices here. Um, I'm going to share this. It's just give me a second. It's going to be annoying. This is not what I want to share with you yet. Okay. So wow. I'm ready to the minutes and just kind of. Let them fall over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It's a, and there was just a lot. Um, we are at the 327 meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I may be wrong about some of these. So, okay. um, 
I'm hoping that someone's pushing back on these. Um, you guys see this okay? Yes. I can zoom in if you need to. So at the bottom of, I guess it would be the second page of the minutes. Okay. First thing I have is it says introduction. One change in the section made by the chair was the wording of the third paragraph where I was the skeptics. This term was removed and replaced with the word proponents. Actually, that was, yeah, was that right. opponents? Oh, opponents. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Yep, let's fix that. <laughs> um, Pro form, I think. No, it would be no. Opponents. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. Opponents. Thank you. Okay, so then the next one. Oh gosh, I'm not exactly sure what page it is, but That's it's okay. this chemical section. Okay. Um, yeah, Natasha, if you can just zoom that in. Zoom in more? more just yep. touch, be great. So it's in the second paragraph okay. of the chemical section where, we're, where it says addition, start the paragraph additional. additional conversation. Yep. And if you get down to the fourth, yep. he says, a strike in the third paragraph after six PPD quino, the words, it seems advisable and replaced with the committee believes. Yep. I think it's the opposite. It was. Okay. Replace the committee believes with it seems advisable because we discussed we tried to keep it sort of with a passive voice until okay. the findings and recommendations. So it's just reversed. I think it's just reversed. Um, this third one is for you, Leslie, okay. if I got it right. Um, what did you say? It was advisable. It's just, a, I think it's flipping the. Yep. Yeah. I'll wait for you to get that. So then the next one is when we get to talk about uh, importance of field maintenance, organic and non-organic. Second paragraph that begins members discuss the yep. topic. Uh, somewhere in there, Leslie, you know what I'm going to point out, a representative from the Park and Recreation Commission. I was letting them slide. Not the, parks. I was okay, slide, okay. But, but. That's to be accurate. Thank you. Thank you. It's too accurate. It's not hard. 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 It's Okay, next page under findings and recommendations. Uh, for the end of the paragraph, it begins the chair explained that it was his understanding. Sorry, this is. Nope, it's uh, okay. I'm sorry, where is it? Uh, findings and recommendations section. Uh, so yeah, the chair explained. You go to the, towards the end of the paragraph, it says, it is this member's, should be believed. Thank you. To its member okay. believe. These are all sort of just this. more. Uh, typos, but my next one Wait, it is what we it's the member's belief, believe. not believe. Thank you. <laughs> so, this my last one yeah. is more substantive. Okay. Um, so, it's uh, where you say the chair addressed the committee to make two points in reference to the footnote, yep. which comes. Um, I think it's accurate until the part towards the end where it says the substitute motion was passed and divided into two separate parts. <laughs> Part A was the formation of the study committee. Part B included the one more requirements in the high school field. It's that next sub bullet okay. that I don't think is accurate. Okay. Or at least I hope I didn't say that. Be sure know that there had been no discussion at town meeting about including either moratorium or review the high school field. There may have been a discussion. I think I was trying to make the argument that okay. there was no discussion about how the high school would be included in this, but I find just eliminating that sub bullet and okay. just going to part A was passed, part B was voted down. So you'd have everything but that bullet that begins the chair noted because yep. who knows what I said or didn't say, but that's not necessarily yep. accurate. Yeah. It was getting me. I, it was so late. Yeah. And yeah. I gotta tell you what I, I was, was kind of just plowing through. And, this yeah. was four hours, so it was really hard to live back through this and like listen to all of it. So it was, it was just like important. Anyone at home have anything? Yep. I thought they were great, by the way. Same. Yeah. 
I mean, there were like eight or nine days that I found only five yeah. little things. Yeah. Um, I don't, I see Joe Barr uh, just, just came in. Joe, we were just going over the uh, meeting minutes and we had a couple of things to correct. Um, so Joe Barr, David Morgan, and Joe Conley, any additional edits? This okay, is Joe Barr. Barr. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. Okay. For me either. Great. I'll then change the motion. Uh, move to accept. Second. Okay. Moved. Uh, and it was a seconded. So I'll call the roll. All right. So, um, Mike. Yes. Marvin. Yes. J uh, Leslie. Yes. <laughs> Jill. Yes. Jim. Yes. Natasha. Yes. Joe Barr. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Joe Conn. Oh no. no. Joe and David don't vote no, on those. Right. Yep. So all right. So that is a seven to zero. They are correspondent received. Next item on the agenda. Yes. So we had two emails. Um, just to the folks that are in the room, if you don't mind if I interject, this screen here is just the meeting minutes that was just pulled up and um, over there is the Zoom. So I apologize if there's confusion. Um so we had two pieces of correspondence received. Uh, one was from um, Susan Chapnick. And this was an email to us uh, with an attachment about Article 12, and it was clarifying, um, or it was, you know, sending an email trying to clarify what the, um, I think the understanding of, of Article 12 from last year's town meeting was. So that was in the packet. Uh, and the second email uh, was from Greg Dennis, and it was with an attachment, um, and he had some comments and edits to the. Um, to the report, so that was also included in the in the meeting. That's mm -hmm. all I've got. We're ahead of schedule. Ahead of schedule, which is nice. Um, so now to the community input portion. And Natasha, do you want to talk about yes. ground rules? Yes. So um, thank you, everybody who is here and who uh, signed up um, to give um, comment tonight. We have allotted a certain amount of time here. So um, what we're going to do is we've had a couple of folks who um, signed up ahead of time, Beth Mwachik and um, Winnell Evans. Thank you. And um, so we will give you uh, both the priority to speak first. Um, everyone will have um, two minutes to, to speak. Um, and then things will go through the chair in terms of you know what other discussion we're going to lead to. Um, and that's really kind of you know, the details. Um, we're asking that, you know, anything that you're going to speak about is in relation to the report. Um, this really isn't the spring forum where we want to get into discussions about any of the, the details, pro or, or non-pro for artificial turf, but really just trying to keep it very much to the report. Um, and we hope to be able to engage in conversation. Um, so like I said, this will go right through the chair. Um, I think those are pretty much the the grounds. This is a hybrid. So what I'll do is um, the folks who have registered um, to talk tonight are both here in the room. And if there's anyone on in Zoom that would like to speak, um, if you would simply raise your hand, um, I can see that here. And if you, for some reason, don't get my attention, um, you know, just unmute yourself and say, "Excuse me, Natasha," and we'll figure it out. But I should be able to see your uh, your hand raised. So. We said two minutes. Yeah. We'll warn you at two minutes. If we go over two minutes, you know, we just say maybe start to wrap things up. But you know, we have a smaller group tonight, so if we don't feel the pressure necessarily, it'll be. You didn't know what to expect, so you know. Yeah. Are there a lot of people on Zoom? How do you know how many? Uh, yeah, so on Zoom, I will let you know who we have. We have um, Greg Dennis, David Morgan, Joe Conley, Joe Barr, <clears throat> Phil Lasker, Robin Bergman, Susan Chapnick, and Susan Stamps. Uh, and there is, I see a hand up. Let me see who that is. That is Greg Dennis. Okay, so Greg, um, I will get to you after we have the other two speakers, but I do see your hand up. Uh, well, it is. Who's first? Um, Beth, would you like to, you were the first one to sign up, so. <laughs> All right. You can stand up if you want. Yeah, whatever you okay. need. Whatever's more you're most comfortable with. Beth Malovchek, uh, 20 Russell Street. I'm a town meeting member, and um, I am the originator of the warrant article. So a correction to page 10 of your minutes. It's not a substitute motion. I was the originator of the warrant article. 
And but you had to sub, but pardon me, you had to submit a substitute motion because it was a no action vote. Okay, all right. So okay. both you're both you're right and I'm right. We're both right. Okay. <laughs> um, and it was for a um, Senate committee, which is why we're here, and I thank you for that. And uh, a um, one year um, uh, moratorium. So um, just uh, for that, and then I I really just. Um, Oh, I did also want to note that in the calendar you're listed as a group. And of course, you're not a group, and that's why I filed the warrant article was so that you would have authority. Um, just it's a little printed. Um, so I want to thank the commissioners for the uh, lengthy and detailed and hard work and research you've done and your commitment to this um, process. It was very important to me and to those of us who signed the papers and who fought long and hard at town meeting um, to see you all here and to go over these um, public health and environmental issues in the face of um, increasing climate change. I'm very appreciative. Um, I read the minutes from last week as well as the draft report. I look forward to reading the final report with the footnotes. I didn't have that once again to see the footnotes. Um, I want to say that I very much appreciate your acknowledgement of science and the science that's reflected in the report. I, um, I just feel that's uh, so very important in times we're living in and uh, was very much a part of what Nell and I experienced and learned as we all have in understanding many issues and acquainting ourselves with them and with the scientists, for instance, who discovered PFAS in um, artificial turf and so on. Um, I would like to make note of um, two things, which I think are relevant to the draft report if they are not in it, though maybe they'll show up in the footnotes. Um, and that is the million dollars in federal monies that the town of Arlington has received to address pollutants in stormwater into the Mystic River. I would, um, I would hope that your report will give um, weight to those efforts that the Mystic River Watershed Association in um, cooperation with Arlington engages in in spending that money to improve stormwater going into Mystic River. I think that is very important. It's so wonderful that we've gotten these federal monies and uh, we don't want other efforts from other departments to neutralize what they are trying to accomplish. The other mm -hmm. point I would like to make note of is that Charles River Watershed Association has come out with a statement and they oppose the installation on artificial turf uh, for many reasons that you can read about. Um, and I think they would um, enhance uh, the science elements in your report, as well as your own knowledge and understanding the context in which uh, this is all happening. So thank you very much, Alvin. Thank you. So, good class. So, we're being a little loose tonight. Does the board have any questions for Ms. Valencia? Okay. Well, we'll move on to Ms. Evans. Yeah, Ms. Evans. And then um, I just want to acknowledge Robin. I do see your hand. You will be able to speak after Dennis. Um, I uh, I was one of the people who worked very closely with Beth and endured physical and verbal intimidation in attempting to get this article before town meeting and learned an enormous amount. It was a a really challenging and satisfying process. Um, when I learned that the study committee had finally been convened, I had no idea what to expect. And I cannot tell you how impressed I am with the, um, with the incredible care that you have given to this, to the depth of the work that you have performed. Um, super, super impressive. And as Beth said, you've, you've really listened to the science and I appreciate that. I also want to give a special shout out to Natasha, whose management and notes should be a template for every board and commission in town. And I'm yeah, very yeah. sorry about that. Don't, don't volunteer Natasha for those words. No, I know, but I just support it. Stellar, stellar. 
So um, my comments on the, on the report specifically, my first comment is on the chemical impacts on human health and environment section. And on page 10, um, I think you, you pretty much comprehensively noted the dangers to children uh, because their immune systems are not yet fully developed, they are literally lower to the ground and therefore more likely to inhale and whatnot. But I do want to add one note that I didn't see there, which is another factor to consider is that children have many more years ahead of them than adults who are exposed to artificial turf for um, negative impacts, illnesses, other syndromes to develop. They have really a lifetime ahead of them. Um, so that might be worth noting. On page 14, in that same section, the report notes that mitigation strategies might include testing to ensure that field materials are PFAS free. Um, I'm sure you all know PFAS testing is enormously difficult because of the sheer number of chemicals, now well over 12,000, uh, because only a very few of those are actually tested for, because some of the test tests that are used are uh, approved in other states, but not in Massachusetts. There, there are many factors that are involved here. Um, and also because it may be the PFAS that have been subject to regulatory uh, scrutiny that get tested for, and all the others are just sort of out there floating around. So it's important to recognize that the absence of PFAS found in testing does not mean that all PFAS are absent. Um, and as far as PFAS-free uh, turf and infills, there are at least two communities, Woodbridge, Connecticut, and Portsmouth, New Hampshire, that each had supposedly certified PFAS-free turf installed, which later testing proved did in fact contain PFAS. Uh, this was by a company called Field Turf in both cases, so we might want to go with them. Um, and one other thing that I, I would ask you to consider including in this section, which, which goes unmentioned in most places, is the impacts on the employees in the factories where artificial turf and infill are manufactured, the communities where these factories are located, the workers who install and remove these fields, and the communities where landfills are located. These are all communities um, subject to you know, a lack of environmental and social justice, as I'm sure you can all imagine. So I, I think it's worth acknowledging that, that they are likewise affected. Um, and finally, when we get to findings and recommendations, and I am gonna veer off just a tiny bit here, but the, the purpose of the report, as I understand it, is to investigate and balance the need for playing time with all the benefits that that provides to our children uh, with maybe the less positive effects of the play surface. And to me, you know, we're entering into a period of global environmental collapse. And insects, amphibians, and birds are, are really in the front line of the, the categories that are being affected right now with water contamination and habitat loss being a couple of the main factors. As the report notes, these are also water contamination and habitat loss are two issues that are part of um, artificial turf. So I know that reduced planning time is a really, really difficult thing for kids and parents to accommodate into their lives. And I know how important it is. I'm a huge proponent of adults um, for kids. But the environmental impacts are not, they are not restricted to their youth, to their young youth and adolescence. These are effects that are gonna follow them through their life. We are leaving them a decayed and decaying planet. Um, well, if I could ask you to sort of... I, and, and, and I am wrapping it up. I'm just saying to me, to me, this, this is really where the weight falls. So, but again, I, I'm so grateful for the work you've all done. Thank you. Very helpful. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Well, Just a, a note about the testing for PFOD and mm -hmm. anything else that we're concerned about. Uh, I think it really depends on what the levels uh, you set as detect, non-detect, or it's very difficult with PFAS and a lot of chemicals to know what may be damaging to the environment or people who don't have that information all readily available. But I'd say that if you test and you say it's a non-detect, 
that's important, but you have to look at at what level you're looking at. So that if you say our level, whatever it might be, 50, whatever the cutes are, whatever the uh, details are, you say we tested and there was no detect because they were all at 25 and not 50. Um, so the problem is, do you know if that's the right level to be testing at? So I think we have to look at EPA and DEP and other authoritative folks to see what the proper testing uh, protocols are. May, may I make a very quick response yeah. to that? Just to note that those levels are continually being re, re, revised yep. downward. Right. So, but right. yes, thank you. And, and I guess the, the thing that I would add is in terms of testing fields, um, the only way to really test them and get a sense of what's out there is to do it at the manufacturing facility once they're installed. Um, there is airborne PFAS that will deposit on the fields. So post installation installation testing is, is pretty much both of us. Okay. Is that correct me if I'm wrong, but we had a discussion about Portsmouth and that was actually problematic. Right. Um, because there was testing in Portsmouth after the, you know, any, anywhere where there's been testing after fields been installed, um, you're effectively putting the field in a contaminated area. And so the contamination you find there may not be representative of the you know, original kind of version manufactured material. Although also as the fields are exposed to sunlight and begin to break down, sometimes testing can then reveal things that weren't originally. Right, I think in part that also depends on the, depends on the nature of the testing. Um, you know, there are labs that are doing much more than, you know, the, the regular good ones. So that's the territory. Next up. Next up, we have. Um, There's another. Um, I'm going to go right in order here. So I'm going to go to Zoom. I'm sorry, Susan. I know you're here in person. Um, Greg Dennis. So, Greg, uh, I'm going to try and unmute you, or you can unmute yourself. And I'm not yes. sure. Yes. Okay. We can hear you. Great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, thank you for receipt of my comments. Um, first, I just want to thank you on the extensiveness, the thoroughness of your report. I just wanted to draw attention, highlight um, a few points in my submission, which I do hope you read in completion. Uh, oh, yeah. Sort of yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> which fell into sort of four main areas. The first is with respect to health and safety section. I just think the report might have gone a bit further to highlight the inverse relationship between kids playing time and screen time. Um, I Something I'm very concerned about, I feel like it's quite important given the, the known negative consequences um, from excessive screen time amongst youth. Uh, the, the second uh, was with respect to heat impacts. I feel like the port gave sort of short shrift to wet bulb globe temperature, given its prominence as a, as a standard for measuring heat stress impact on active populations. I feel like the, the term could have been sort of better clarified, defined, and its relevance given um, in some of the studies into measuring the WGT values across athletic surfaces, that those could have been cited in the report. Um, the third comment was with respect to chemical exposure <laughs> risk. Uh, reading the report, I felt like it suggested that the research into exposure risk is sort of non-existent or almost zero. And I don't think anybody would disagree that we need to have more research, but I feel like the research today isn't zero, that it's, there is, there are studies and we could sort of look into, have, we could have quibbles with the funding or some of the methodology of the studies, but they are in, they're either governmental or peer reviewed. And those could be cited, I think, in the report, perhaps with some caveats. And it's relevant that they all sort of point to um, more or less, they reach sort of the same conclusion, which is they aren't able to detect any risk. And I'm concerned that someone reading the report would not come away understanding that sort of big picture state of the research that we have to date. And then the fourth area is briefly with respect to recycling. The language there I felt was a little unclear about the potential for recycling at the end of life of turf. There are nearby communities that are contractually mandating recycling as part of their procurement. And I think that that possibility um, could be highlighted in the report. And um, perhaps there could even be a recommendation that 
Arlington fall in the footsteps of some of these communities that are doing that. And that's it. And thank you again. So great, great points. Um, I think the really good point you made in your comments was about that low term. You're, you're right. Uh, you noticed something none of us noticed. We never defined it. So that will be rectified. We actually, should, if we're going to discuss it, we should have the formal definition of what that is and why it's used. So we're already working on that. Um, uh, in terms of recycling, uh, you know, I, I read your comments. I understand where you're coming from. Um, I will say that in the recommendations section, we do recommend exactly what you have said, which is uh, we don't call it water town, but essentially the water town model, which is it should be built into the contract that you know if we ever get an artificial turf field that we want end of life recycling, uh, the most natural, uh, environmentally friendly end of life recycling built into that contract, or else we won't buy the turf from from the manufacturer. So I think that is there, but. Um, I think your points are well taken, but I really appreciate the thing about wet bulb low temperature because you can read this report like I have a dozen times and still miss something that someone with fresh eyes catches. So, but thank you. Anything for Greg? Um, I think I would just say, from the standpoint of, of risk assessment, um, there are significant challenges in terms of the method methodology of trying to assess um, exposure risk, uh, and and these are pretty much cited in virtually, you know, every research paper that's out there. I mean, all, pretty much every single research paper that's uh, been written on the subject of artificial turf ends with, and we need to know, know a lot more than we know now, and we need to continue to do a lot more research. Um, as an industrial hygienist, I, I do a lot of, you know, monitoring for, for assorted chemical hazards. Um, and to try and do that with artificial turf would be extremely challenging. Um, there are new methods that are being developed that will hopefully uh, shed more light on this, but right now we're kind of stuck with existing technology and methods, and, and, and I think that, you know, we've acknowledged that, so. Anything else for Greg? Okay. Thank you, Greg. Okay. Thank you very much. Next, um, we have Robin, who is uh, on Zoom. Robin, can you hear us and can you unmute yourself? Yes, thank you very much. I'm can a little bit you? can can you hear me? We can. Yes. Okay, great. I'm a little challenged tonight. I lost my internet on my computer, so I'm on my phone. So I'm gonna be jumping back and forth and I won't appear on the screen. Um, first I wanna thank the study committee for all the science. I want I want to um Ditto my colleagues, Beth and Winnell. I'm one of the four people that worked very intensively on this Warrant article and did a huge deep dive into this, both for this and for another group that I'm working with that's more statewide. Um, I'm really heartened to see um, the emphasis on all the studies and the science. And I'm very heartened to see that your first recommendation is for grass fields first. Um, let's see, the other thing I did send in communication with the state, the new statement by the Charles River Watershed Association, and I just wanted to read the first line of it into the record, which is, um, our stance on artificial turf. CRWA opposes the installation of artificial turf as contrary to our core mission of promoting the health of the Charles River and its watershed. Given the increasing prevalence of synthetic turf usage in watershed communities, CRWA wishes to articulate its position on artificial turf and provide resources for those interested in learning more. And I won't read any more, but they go on about the problems with it. And then they also give resources. And I suggest that you might wanna look at that before you issue the rest of the report, the final version, you might want to incorporate something from there. Um, two other points I wanted to make. One is you might want to also make a mention of some other artificial turf related products that people should be aware of um, in um, poured in place, also called PIP. 
and other playground materials made of crumb rubber and also have PFAS and we have young children playing on those and I worry about those. I think they're going to be using some of those materials at Robin's farm and I worry about it also because it's um, up uphill from where the community gardens are. So if it's going into the water table over there and then going into the garden and if people are eating anything that they're growing in that garden, I would worry about that. Um, and then lastly, um, I wanted to mention that as far as my research shows, there's really no real recycling of this material. Some of it is reused, but the PFAS and the other toxic chemicals are still there. Um, some of it's piling up in fields in Pennsylvania. Um, there's one factory in Europe that's separating the materials and recycling it by reusing it, but it's still contaminating wherever it's going. And then some of it's being burned in Houston, for example, where the chemicals are then going into the air and landing in surrounding communities, most of whom are environmental justice communities. So there's no real recycling. There's no way to get rid of the PFAS. Um, I just wanted to make that point clear. And again, thank you so much for doing a stellar job in such rapid, in such a rapid time frame. It's very impressive. And I know it was, you know, a lot of pressure to get this done. So thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. We appreciate it. Uh, any questions for Robin? Any other committee members here or at home? Okay. Thank you, Robin. We appreciate it. Okay. So next, um, Susan Stance. Hi. Hi. It's so great to see everybody in the room that I'm <laughs> really excited about this. Um, uh, just a, a quick thing. I had, Jim, I had sent you an email on Friday. Um, after I guess the materials were submitted for the agenda. So, and, and it was just, um, I, it, what's, the, what's the date of the report we're talking about now, the date of the draft? Because the last uh, report I see on the website is dated March 22nd. Yes. We still talking about it. Uh, yes. Sure. Okay. So no changes. Well, I, I remember you were making some changes during the last meeting. So those changes, those will be, um, we just didn't read, we didn't have enough time to get them full in time. So okay. those are like, so we're going to take tonight's comments and we'll talk about them and then we'll release everything with oh, okay. the changes. So, so nothing so, has been released yet. So that draft wasn't partially changed. No. Oh, no. okay. I didn't want to confuse the public. So I, I didn't right. put the 22nd in yeah. this week's packet because okay. I thought we're going to read the same thing. Well, between what I we put on the 22nd so. and our minutes, I think we won't hold this yeah. time against you. So right. Uh, yeah. I think people can see that, you know, what we put out and where, yes. we, where we think some changes need to be made. Right. And and just, we just haven't put out the new draft. Yes. yes. We yeah. will. Okay. Very nice. So, so I did review those minutes carefully since I too was taking notes yes. during that meeting. Um, and I think you might have missed something in the findings and recommendations that that was what my the email or Jim that I sent to you was regarding a couple of things. Um, I brought three copies of my email. I don't know if you want to look at them or Jim, you just, you just I mean, I, I'm not sure what to do, but I can tell you what they were. Don't you do that? Yeah. All right. Um, and then if, you know, he's got it, so we can forward it to, or I can yeah. forward it to, or something. Or actually, I did copy one this is you. Yeah. Yes, so I, I have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it was. It's regarding the um, applicability of the report to the lack to the um, applicability of the report to the high school building project. That the high school building project is not exempted from any thoughts that anyone may have based on this extremely well done report. Um, and that was just something I just wanted to make sure it was crystal clear since obviously there was a misunderstanding and there probably is out in public too. And, and there may be on the high school building committee too. So I, I just think it needs to be crystal clear that no, that those projects are not exempt. Um, doesn't mean that they can't go through as they'd like to. It just means that 
this report applies to them as much as to any other project in town. And um, so, but it, it, if you haven't made any changes yet, I'm not sure there's any point in me going over these because you're pro you got this email and hopefully everybody can talk about it. We will, we will definitely talk. And um, the, one, the one thing in the minutes that I didn't notice that I felt was, would be a, a change would be in um, the, <clears throat> Well, we talked about the changes in footnote 90, 94, 95, whatever it is. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what you ended up agreeing on, but I think it was something, it was your change that you said saying you were concerned with, you're going to say you were focused on, you weren't focused on the high school. Um, the, but the one change that I, I didn't hear you talk about was something to be consistent with that, which is the um, above the bullets in the findings and recommendations, the bullets were the first one from rubber should not be used, et cetera. In the, <clears throat> the sentence um, right above that first bullet, it says um, to the extent that future field planners choose to seriously consider artificial turf, I'm suggesting that that word future come out because that kind of confuses the situation with we're saying that we didn't omit, and we did or we did not omit the high school project from this. So I don't think you should say future field planners um, because this is a current field planning process that the high school is going through. And then also one more change at the end of that sentence that I did hear you talk about where it says committee feels strongly that the following point should be considered by those planners. Planners really just took out future for all fun for all future projects not yet in the planning stages. And that phrase for all future projects not in the planning stages should be taken out. It to be consistent with what the committee said that um, the high school projects are not exempt with this. That would be my recommendation. And that's what I put in the email. So hoping that we make that change. And other than that, I got I had nothing to complain about. I think you did an amazing <laughs> job. I a select board earlier this week, last week, that you guys were amazing. And I just want to congratulate everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. If you want to distribute that email to the group that's here, I'm fine with that. Oh, copies you come yeah, because we I, probably I are going to spend some time talking about that. I can make, I can yeah, make I can, well. yeah, I can give you the three copies that I have. Um, that's all I have. So, do we have anyone else? Then? So. Uh, let me put one here. Is there anyone else from the public that would, I'm sorry, uh, uh, from Zoom land, I'm sorry, uh, that would like to speak? If um, you would, please raise your hand now. Mary, speak now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, I am not seeing anyone else from uh, Zoomland that would like to speak. Is there anyone else in the public here that would like to speak? Elena? Okay. Sierra, come make the bottom, sir. Okay. Well, in that case, we will close the, the public portion of it and move to the uh, we'll chart for continued discussion of the report. Um, I guess I'll start off where Susan left off, um, and, uh, yes, um, I should wait for that. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll take a breather for a bit. I don't want to lose our note taker. Yeah. We're running ahead of schedule, which is very nice. Just leave it back to take the paperwork from my employees. I just well, consider our eyes for the quite over there. Very nice. I feel like we eat all and drinks or something else. <laughs> <laughs> I just think we definitely have some my recent corner. And then the little bit of the Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. So um, I think it's appropriate to pick up where, where Susan left off. Um, because I think if you look at our minutes, 
we do have a distance, you know, and I, and I say this, Susan is um, been with us every step of the way with us. And um, I said this to the select board, Susan is in many ways the, uh, the classic citizen activist, uh, you know, the model citizen activist in that some of groups does things and sticks with them. And um, I think she's made this a better committee with her input throughout. But I do have my disagreements with Susan. When we do, we disagree without being disagreeable. This is hopefully gonna be one of those times. Our minutes reflect a different viewpoint of that discussion on footnote. I think sometimes it's 94, 95, depending on if we've added or taken out footnotes, but the last footnote in the report. Um, and as you see with the minutes, which we've approved tonight, have a different viewpoint of how we've edited that state. Um, so I'm happy to have a further discussion with the committee. I, I think it's an honest statement from this committee to say, um, we didn't look at these issues because we didn't think we needed to. Um, I think that genuinely reflects the viewpoints of every member of this committee. If I'm wrong, someone will correct me tonight. But um, if we thought this was going to impact, first of all, we didn't look at any one field. This committee charge didn't ever say, tell us about Poets Corner, tell us about Thorndike Field, tell us about Robbins Farm Park. But we would have approached this very differently if we had. It was mm -hmm. a macro view of our turf, of artificial turf versus natural turf. And it was not geared towards any one particular field. Sure, along the way, you know, we had examples that someone was almost trying to make a point about a particular, you know, uh, issue, you'd reference something. But, you know, by and large, we never focused on any one individual field. Um, and I think that was consistent with the charge of the committee. Um, I think if we thought our recommendations were going to apply to the high school building committee, we would have approached this job very differently. Would have called in the high school building committee and had a lengthy discussion with them, shared documents, um, shared input. Uh, they didn't invite us in, and we didn't invite them in, and I'm not offended. Either way, well, I don't think they're offended either. Um, we just did not focus on the high school because frankly, and this is me speaking of me, not for the committee, I thought that cake was baked. Um, town meeting, in my opinion, speaking for myself, acted like that cake was baked. Um, and no one's ever moved me or educated me to a different position on this. Um, I'm open to a different position, but that's not how I proceeded. Um, so, I mean, I think the footnote now sort of says, we change it to say our findings and recommendations, don't have the language right in front of me, but I think we essentially changed it to the, the scope of our work did not focus on um, any current or pending projects. We were focused on future projects because that's what we believed our charge. Um, that's an honest statement. That, uh, that's just an honest statement. We, we were not focused on that. Um, and it does mention, it continues to mention the high school field and the Catholic field to say these were not things we looked at. We didn't, because that also, I believe, is an honest statement. Um, if I'm getting any of this wrong, jump in with three members. Okay. But I was going to say it's if we had had that discussion along the way, I think we would have had to have a discussion about what alternatives, we would have had to dig into the alternatives and we really left it at there. For future projects, there are alternatives that are going to have less impact than crumb. And it's the job of whoever's proposing that future project to do that research. And so the fact that we did not say that, I don't think that it would be possible for the high school building committee in the next six weeks or whatever they have before they have the order to do an adequate job. And then we're gonna, I agree we would end up with the wrong product. And that wasn't, the goal of this committee was to move forward in a way that benefits the children of the town, not forces a decision that's not well vetted. Um, and I think we ended, we ended specifically at saying future, and that's why the future was in there several times, because we recognized we need, we need time to figure out what the best of the future is, and that the, the science on those artificial infills is still coming out. We, we weren't ready to make a decision. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, uh, that I think was the most well, okay. No, you go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I fully agree that there was no specific mandate or direction to look at any specific field. I think that's absolutely clear. I think the the point that I made last meeting, and I sort of think is still valid, is that uh, we spent a lot of time and effort by this committee and uh, others to come up with some findings and some recommendations. And one of the sort of strong outcomes was we think from rubber is not a good idea. Uh, and I think it would be uh, against the principles that set up this whole committee to ignore the findings and recommendations that we had, which included, let's not do crumb rubber, let's not, you know, there was a series of other findings and recommendations. So I think it's inconsistent with what, how, why the committee was set up uh, to ignore those when we have uh, fields that are uh, in the pipeline that um, I know, understand that the uh, that the infill that are is planned is crumb rubber. Uh, I just think it's uh, inconsistent with our our charter, if you will, to ignore that as we go forward. So I think that's why I made the comment about the footnote and. Uh, Still feel like now. I agree with what Mike's saying. I think that where we got tripped up is in the convoluted nature of how the study came to be at town meeting. Um, not a, I wasn't a voting member of town meeting at the time, but I sat through um, the confusion and the discussion. Mm -hmm. And so I think that. Uh, Because the high school was exempt from the moratorium language, I'm sure that there were many people that then carried that notion forward, that everything uh, applied to exempting um, that project. And um, so it's a, it is a, it's, it's a valid place to find us um, not having considered the high school project. And we didn't, you know, we didn't specifically talk about it. We had no conversation with them. They had no conversation with us. You know, they issued a report that's really um, diametrically opposed to some of the things that we are proposing and recommending. So there is, you know, this reconciliation of what we studied and what we've said versus where they're at with that project. Um, if we, as a committee, feel so strongly, and I do believe that we do, I know I do, that the, that the crumb is the evil actor, that we really, you know, we may not know about all of the, um, the goods and bads of the natural infills and the alternative infills, um, but even when we, you know, look at the Tory information, they haven't found the bad position for those things, though we know that crumb is not something that is good for a number of reasons. So, you know, I, I'm really torn because as I said at the last meeting, you know, I think that it's it's a an economic issue. It's a political issue, um, and it's not something that we did. I don't think that we can move forward in including a recommendation that impacts something that we haven't specifically worked on it. and I don't I don't necessarily have an appetite for extending our stay and looking at that but I think that if we are going to have a conversation about the high school then that would have to be something that we do yeah I'll make two comments I don't know if you want to get it 
No, I mean, I'll make two comments. I mean, these are very little I disagree with here tonight so far. Uh, one is that, you know, my own operating assumption was that this was for the future planner painting with a blank canvas. You know, someone comes to us and says, we need to redevelop the field. Pick, pick the Poets Corner, Thorndike, Robbins Farm. We don't, you know, we're looking at the options. And this was like, okay, pull out our report. This is your guide. When the new issue comes through that door and you have a blank canvas. Um, uh, and that would include time, the time that comes up down the road when an artificial, current artificial turf field does need to start that process. Um, so in both cases, my understanding would not apply to the high school high school project because that's well along the way. Um, second point, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Martin, but I thought you said something the last thing that really, if it wasn't you, I'll still give you credit, um, that, that, that struck me. You said, this is the nature of construction projects. You have to, big, big projects. You have to make commitments years ahead of time. I think that was David. Okay. <laughs> well, right. I don't know. Maybe neither one will want to take credit for what I'm about to say, but you essentially have to make commitments knowing that, you know, three years before a shovel hits the ground on something. And so sometimes maybe, you know, maybe something better comes off comes out in those two or three years, but the nature of the project and the financial commitments are such that it's pretty hard to unring that bell, if not impossible, or it comes at quite a cost. Um, decisions were made about these fields a long time ago, long before we were even constituted. They may not have actually purchased something yet, but they've budgeted for certain things. Um, I mean, this is just my long way of saying, this is not something I wanted to ever get into because I never thought we had to. And if we had, as Leslie said, we're going to have to be here another few months if someone says, well, you were supposed to look at the high school. And they were going to be subject to what you're trying to do here. I, or, yeah, no, um, I, I actually, I think I, I will not take credit for that. <laughs> I thought um, it was a um, <laughs> It was for kind of pop, but it wasn't mine. Um, no, I, I guess what I would say is, you know, I kind of went into this with, you know, the supposition that the, the high school field was not part of our purview, and because it had been, you know, specifically exempted last spring, you know, from one party. Um, you know, that said, I'm a little torn because, you know, like what Mike said, we I think we come out as a committee fairly strongly against the use of crumb rubber. And you could say, well, you don't necessarily have to say it in the report, but anyone who looks at the report is going to look at this and think about the, the high school field and go, yeah, so why are we doing this? Um, you know, I, but that's, that's not me. Um, I think our report does come out against Chrome. And again, I think that, you know, initially the idea was that we weren't dealing with existing problems. And so that was just, you know, kind of putting railings on what we were doing. Um, yeah, and I think that it would have, you know, if, if we were going to do this, yeah, we would need to talk to the high school folks and the planning committee and, you know, whoever else. Yeah, I mean, they um, had their own engineers, they had their own studies. Maybe we agree with them, maybe we don't, but we never, we never had that right. conversation. A high school and teacher in me worries that we are. We're trying to get kids to care about the environment more. And if we think of the big picture and we're talking about two fields at one site, do we do ourselves a disservice by going, as a town meeting member, I thought I was talking about future projects. If we're if we're gonna go back at the high school or, or ask them to go back to the high school. We are really going to um, potentially delay the high school field. And I worry that, you know, a whole bunch of kids see environmental awareness getting in the way of progress. And where we could move forward and ensure that the choices are made better. I just worry that that that, that actually like makes some 1700 kids think differently about 
making good future decisions about the environment because they they see what they see is the message of like you don't get to play on the fields that we're supposed to play on because things got stalled because there was confusion in in some language and I just worry about the effect that that has on the on the way kids think. I would just add one small thing, and that is that this field is going to be around for 10 years or whatever. Or seven. Or seven. seven, seven, seven whatever. Seven, whatever. Seven, seven. And kids are going to be playing on that for the four years they're in high school and maybe before or after. And that exposure is also something. That's, and as I said, I think that for us to ignore our own findings uh, is inconsistent with why we were constantly. I mean, to be clear, we're saying the next time that field is replaced, it should be following our recommendations. I hear that. And part of the field is going to be replaced in, in 2025, 2026. And so they're already going to be starting to look for what is the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, I think the, the probably the largest part of the field, the field that's currently there. So we're talking about the two new fields. Um, not keeping the current football field um, crumb for even 10 more years. Joe. Yes, Joe had a comment and I think he has his hands up. Joe does. Can you unmute? Yeah, sorry about that. So um, thank you. And, and I, I do just want to point out I understand the situation that our working group is in, but the Conservation Commission approved uh, the use of chrome rubber for the original high school project, which might correct, is it 2019? Yeah. Okay, and I believe it's up in front of the Conservation Commission again because the permit ran out and they have to you know, decide on whether they're gonna reissue it, correct? This Thursday. Thursday, so I mean, I, I would say that regardless of what we're gonna put in our report, the Conservation Commission who has oversight of this jurisdictional area of this project is going to make a decision with regards to chrome rubber. So I just don't want to give anyone, everyone the impression that, you know, our report is going to be, you know, making the decision on whether the high school field should or should not have chrome rubber. So, um, you know, I would, I would agree, although it, it sends a contradicting message, I, I believe with the fact the Conservation Commission is voting on this on Thursday, it, it is a little bit too late for our recommendations to include the high school. See Joe Barr's hand up. Yes. Joe. Yeah, I guess and just sorry, just to add to that, um, <clears throat> you know, like like Joe Connolly just said, I mean, I think we we can, I think we all probably would would like this to have applied to somehow or, or been considered for the high school field. But ultimately, like Joe said, we don't really have, like we can say it, we can request it, but there's nothing, we don't have a regulatory authority unlike the conservation commission or other bodies um, that would, would have the ability to sort of compel it or at least request it very seriously be considered. Um, I, I do wonder though, if like, you know, given that we're gonna be completing this report very soon, it'll be ready for distribution town meeting, should we, you know, is there some way we could, you know, request that it be forwarded to the high school building committee for their consideration with, you know, the thought that, well, could you at least consider whether there's a different info material that could be substituted that won't change the scope or the cost in a, in a significant way, recognizing that, you know, that may not be possible. But I mean, I think it would be, to Mike's point, I feel like it would be, you know, it's, it's a little, it does seem a little strange to just completely ignore this just because we never talk about it, but, but to, I guess Jim's overall point, you know, we did not talk about this enough for us to really like take it on head on, but I do think it would be nice if we could just sort of at least give a little prod to say, hey, we went through this whole year long or six month long process. This is what we were, re this was the result was that we really don't want crumb rubber. Is there any way you could try to comply with that recommendation? But without, but knowing that other than if the Conservation Commission somehow decides to, you know, to, to do something on their side that, you know, we don't, like I said, we don't have any regulatory authority to actually compel anything to happen. This is all just, you know, recommendations to, to other bodies on how they should, you know, what they should do in the future. 
So Natasha and I have started. Oh, sorry. I was just I have the comments up here in the chat because I know not everyone is um able to see. So so Natasha and I obviously are taking all the um input from the committee members from our last meeting uh and trying as reflected in the minutes and trying to incorporate it uh into the next draft you're gonna see, which we so that will like apply. Um on this one, though, you know, we had a long discussion and, you know, I think our minutes accurately reflect where we landed, but, you know, tonight I hear more nuance in the discussion. I mean, without necessarily wordsmithing it right now, I guess maybe I'll just try to get an endorsement of some principles here, some general principles. It sounds like committee members are comfortable couple of things. And I'm not saying this is necessarily how we word it exactly, but an admission that we were focused on future projects, right? I'm mentioning we were focused on future projects. That was the operating assumption I think of this committee. Of projects that have that have yet to go through yes. a design process. Yes. Um, and that that was our focus. And we Proceeded accordingly. And in terms of high school or Arlington Catholic, we did not focus on any one particular field and we did not consult with the high school building committee on, on any of it. I mean, that's an accurate statement. Or right? have a conversation with Arlington Catholic yeah. to see what their well, feeling is about where they would fall in the changing out from rubber at some point. I mean, we have not had a conversation with either school. I mean, I think those are just fact, my mind, factual statements. We weren't focused on these things, we were focused on future. Mike, you're giving me that look. <laughs> well, I think, as I said earlier, you're absolutely correct that, that we didn't look at any individual fields uh, or any specific projects. Uh, but as I at the risk of repeating myself, that doesn't mean that we can ignore the results of what we have come up with. Well, we're not ignoring anything. I mean, we're not decision makers. Decision well, makers that's why to make their decisions, but we should be honest with them about what we were looking at when we wrote this report, what we weren't looking at. Right. We weren't looking at any specific fields, but we, the uh, footnote itself sort of suggests to the town meeting what they should consider and what they shouldn't consider. Well, there's nothing before town meeting. They have no votes ahead of them. There are no, there's nothing, nothing, no, nothing for them to do in the short term other than hear a presentation, a PowerPoint will do at some point, Natasha. And I have, you know, a summary of this committee's report. And I'll get to that by the way. I'd like all of you to be there, but when the time on the night happens in town meeting. But um, you know, there's there's technically nothing for town meeting or the select board to decide on this, and those are the people we're to deliver the report to. Charge didn't say we deliver this to the Conservation Commission, though I suspect they will read the report, or the High School Building Committee, though I suspect they will read the report, and we will encourage them to, you yeah. know, uh, we submit it to the various people we do have to submit it to. I mean, we'll take a stab at this, and obviously this may be the last issue we will discuss at our last meeting, you know, it may be our last sticking point, uh, but I just kind of want to get a sense of where folks are, because I don't want to say anything where all seven of us are comfortable. That's one. If if I had thought if I had thought that the our scope included current projects, I would have pushed for the bullet about chrome rubber to be about phasing out chrome rubber. Because I don't think I do think we don't we want to move away from it. Um, I don't think it's dire enough. Like there's hundreds of fields in Massachusetts that are from rubber and probably many of them are gonna be phased out or replaced with different infill, but we're not scooping out the rubber immediately. And so I, in my mind, the current field, and in fact, we're, we're saying the high school football field in Ireland can be Catholic, we're not asking them to change their infill immediately. So to me, anything that would, Shovels in the ground, cost it out, would be in that phase away category. 
And that's what the language would have said if I thought, or I would have pushed for the language to say if I thought that it included it. And another part of the report, we're very honest and upfront. Hey, Margo, that's kind of in the section you worked on about alternative infills. You know, they have great potential, but right now there aren't any real long term peer reviewed studies about we have industry studies that say rock feels great. And I tend to believe those studies that the industry has done have something to them, but they are industry studies. Like I'm waiting for the kind of studies that we cite in the rest of the report, and we just haven't seen a lot of them. We got Ian's kind of, you know, viewpoint is hot take on these. And, and, you know, he sort of says some had potential and they've already fallen by the wayside, like cork. You know, others like green sand and Brockville have, might have some legs, but, you know, we, we're going to know more in the next year or two on these things of whether, you know, when we see more than industry studies. Um, so, I mean, you know, we're very enthusiastic about their potential, but right now what I bet my when I bet my mortgage on Rockville, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not in that position, but I don't know. Well, I'll say that if if the Park and Rec Commission, the only other entity in town who's who could potentially be considering doing a field over or multiple fields over, if we had a field to do over that we were going to do artificial fur as a commissioner and decision maker on that body, I today, knowing what we've done, I would push very hard not to do, I mean, as our recommendation says, not to do crumb rubber and to look at doing one of the alternative infills, whatever the most promising infill of the time is at the time. And, and we do, we have, we do these, we do and we have made these decisions in other areas with respect to walkway surface. What's, what's the best type of surfacing for paths in a park? We've gone through iterations of um, generational materials that we try in a pilot and we test them out to see what their durability is, to you know, see what the upside and the downsides are. So we're not always gonna, you know, we're not always gonna make a decision that has no downside. Or that isn't, or that's going to last in perpetuity, but you make the best decision that you can make at the time with the knowledge that you have, both scientific and industry, because it's the industry that is innovating to try to get over the issues that you face. So, I mean, the report is useful from that perspective, but it is inconsistent with, with the, the situation that exists at the high school. And so, you know, it, to that extent, it's a little bit frustrating, but it is what it is because they made the decision at a point in time. And that's the decision that they are contractually obligated toward unless there's some regulatory authority that says they can't do it unless there's some um, ability written into the contract to do change orders for certain aspects of the project but we don't know that so i don't feel that we can say what they should do the only ones that i think that might have a chance of doing that could possibly be the Conservation Commission, but I don't believe it's this committee that can do that because it's not within our purview. Well, we're advisory, we're not regulatory. Exactly. So, you know, our charge was to, you know, study this and come up with a report. Exactly. Yes. 
And I think our findings are reasonably clear. Um, I think somebody who reads the report carefully will come away feeling the way that we do. And, you know, whether those are, you know, end up being decision makers or not is, you know, it's like, it's my continuing statement. I wish this was a magic wand instead of a pen, <laughs> you know, but it's not. Um, So I think I'm going to move on from the footnote discussion. I think this now when you count what we did on the last one and this one, I think we probably spent two hours on this. So um, Natasha and I will take our best shot trying to get where you all are on this. Um, and maybe that's the last thing we have to resolve next week. But I, now I'd like to sort of say, is there any remaining piece of business from the report? And I know this is tough because you haven't seen any draft, but you have seen the minutes which reflects the kind of changes we are going to make. Is there anything that's still... Yeah. So two things. Yeah. Yeah. First, um, in the bullet about chrome, I recognized after last meeting that it says chrome rubber and plastic. And I don't think we went through the alternative infills enough to really just say blanket plastic. Um, I would argue that acrylic sand could be classified as plastic because acrylic is plastic. Um, and we had talked about acrylic sand and we heard from Ian that acrylic sand is a potential. Um, I think there are some plastics that are probably not a good choice, but I don't think we went into those choices. So I would, I would go with scratching plastic um, and, and having that discussion in the future of what are the alternatives. I, I don't even know if like some of the natural ones have plasticizers in them. And, and I think we want to be aware of that and we want future groups to really look at that. But I think the blanket statement, they're just not ready to say it. Jill, was that plastic referring to infill or was it referring to the actual? Oh, I'm referring to the infill. I think the whole stuff I pulled up. That's a fair comment. That's a no. fair comment. Um, and I see where you're coming from, Jill, where you're saying it's not necessarily where. Um, Endorsing plastic, but we're just not we're not we're not striking against it in the same way. We in the same breath as rubber, because that's where we really do have a lot of research, and we did spend a lot of time. If you as a committee don't feel comfortable, yeah, and I, I feel like as a committee we've acknowledged that there mm -hmm. hasn't been a whole lot of research into mm -hmm. alternative infills, and so you know we can't make any specific recommendations in that area other than to continue doing research and look at what's evolving. Are people comfortable with us striking that reference? Those two words, three words. Which ones? And plastic. Sorry, it's like bullet number one. Thank you. Plastic. Or plastic. Yes. Or plastic. And you had a second point. And then I sent Natasha a draft of language around. We talked about an equity bullet to look at. If yeah. Kevin Connolly wasn't here last week, but where new fields are replaced in town and looking at that piece and, and access to fields. So do you need I don't know if it's what we wanted to say, but I wish I don't remember which what language was we, we were talking about um the idea that if we we're gonna redo fields, like understanding that the location in the town was important for oh yeah mm -hmm. equitable, equitable distribution, equitable distribution across yeah. Yeah. So I took a stab at what that to say. Sorry. Again, you know, my emails and where I was like. Huh. <clears throat> I'm not sure what else is there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. Think before. Talked it out. Like, we'll give you 10 seconds. I just want to get the bullet. I just want the bullet. Uh, no, I think it, it, it's just, it just came to bullet. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So I'm going to, to share this. It just talks about the bullet, and then you did mention the plastic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. No worries. It gets a little hairy. Like I don't. I can't. I can't show you all of my emails. <laughs> I mean, I you could see them, but I don't. Okay. So this was the bullet. Let me just share my screen for the Zoom people. 
Um, I'm, I'm double dutying here and it's very mm -hmm. confusing for me. So I do apologize a million times over. Myself what can the folks at home see right now? Nothing. Joe, Joe, or Joe, can you <laughs> tell us what you see? Yeah. Oh, we see Joe. We see Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very tough to see. Um, okay, I'm going to share this. Can you see the bullet now? We may have to read it because it's very yes. small, right? Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, let me. Uh, all right, so the bullet here says when uh, renovations are considered for town fields, whether natural grass or artificial turf, providing equitable access to high quality planning services should be considered, and planning should ensure balancing the needs of different, uh, different neighborhoods as one of the factors. So we talked about this. Um, in, in the section when we started talking about the, the heat islands. If I recall correctly, we started talking about the heat islands there and then we went down to the recommendations um, and the meeting units should reflect that we were not sure where we wanted to include this equity piece, whether it was talking in the um, section about the heat islands or down in the recommendations or both. So this was, um, I had asked Jill just to, she had had this idea of the bullet. So I asked her just to send me a blurb um, and I, I'm sorry, I did not include this. I am going to talk about it, but thank you for bringing it up. But then you can go on the recommendations. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think that there's any need for additional conversation or discussion about equity in the heat island section? No. No. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So we will. How does this language, and can folks see this? Okay, I don't know. Uh, we can put it on the I think language sound. Okay. I would not limit it to renovations because it, I mean, it's, it's conceivable yeah. now, but I would yeah. say that there could be a new field built in our land. Like, yeah. Probably nowhere, but you know, <laughs> there's always a chance, right? Like, no. <laughs> <about another one. laughs> Additionally, is this a separate bullet or is this a bullet that should go part of the heat island bullet? Okay. Separate. I would separate. separate. Okay. Separate. 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 So, so very nice statement should say not across. Yes. I know. <laughs> yeah, we got you. Separate um bullet. Sounds like people are comfortable with this. Yeah, okay. So that's great. I'm going to unless you have to do it. Well, I spent, I, I'm not sure where we came down in the end as tax. We laid out in that final recommendation statement. Um, the statement that says the committee believes that artificial turf should be an option for future field planners in Arlington, but it is an option that should not be considered until natural turf options have proven unworkable and practical or financially easy. Right. I think I think the minutes accurately reflect where we came up. I think you'd be comfortable with what. That assessment. You put, you I, put the minutes up. We didn't bring it up. I, yeah, let's bring the minutes up. I am not if that butt clause is Okay. I don't think it is. Remember, we we were going to change well, the word from, a, we, from a negative connotation to a non negative. Well, that's, that's the butt clause. If the butt clause is still there. I ain't sure. No, there isn't a butt there anymore. We're going to the draft meeting. Everyone, bear with me. I'm gonna scroll to. You're close. No, it actually is further up. Up. Yeah, I think it was yeah, above it's the section. <laughs> Lower. Okay. Let's go for the first. So. What else? Before that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Struggle is real. Because we were going in. in it, it was no, in no, three so different no, okay. I mean, there's a discussion, but then there's yes, the recommendations. Okay. Okay. Right? The committee agreed to the following. So we were striking undeniable. Well, that was sort of yeah. earlier in the yeah. Right. Yeah. So it two got rid of the butt clause. Yeah. yeah. So it's that's the new word. What is The committee believes that artificial turf should be an option for future field planners in Oregon, but it is an option that should be considered after careful evaluation of the practicality and feasibility of natural turf options. There is no butt. Well, there is a bias, but it's not but the it's, same. Well, it is not qualifier. The same, but it's There's a qualifier, qualifier, but it's there. it's a very different qualifier than we had. 
The qualifiers, and, and this is, you know, the qualifiers, the points that should be considered, the bullets, are specific and actionable. And I think that while everybody can may not agree with all of them, they're reasonable outcome of the topics that the committee study. And I support that, and I support those. However, I think that the qualifiers and in even those suggested as alternatives are very subjective. They don't guide disputes over when, where, and if artificial turf should be considered as an option for a specific renovation. I think they keep the door open to further entrenched positions for or against the use of artificial turf or natural grass in playing field renovation decisions. So it's it's that qualifying statement on the recommendation. Well, perhaps, well, was, perhaps. Well, I'm sorry, Mike, before you, I just remember what the prior draft said, only after. It no longer says that. I mean, we've come a long way. I, I, I know you're, I know, I don't, I don't want to dismiss your position, but we came a long way based on input you gave us. We've come further. And yes. I, think, I think that you could say that uh, should be an option for future field planners in Arlington after a careful evaluation of the practicality and feasibility of natural turf options. Just get rid of the bug. That right, help? that's all we did is get rid of the bug. But we're well, still saying you need to prove to me that grass is unworkable. And guess well, what? No, that's not, that's not what it says anymore. That's not what it says. To me, like grass being impractical could be, I don't know, it's a landfill site and we actually figure out that mm. adding an artificial turf is better for the people that are going to play on the field in that area. It doesn't say that you couldn't put grass there and it's unworkable. It says that it's more practical in this particular scenario. Um, and I think it puts the burden on a group to have a real true discussion um, and, and Talk about feasibility, which I think is what we want. The, and, and I think the Park and Rec Commission has has done that. And I think because what this is saying is like practic practically, right? So when you looked at the herd field example, you discussed that, but it wasn't that it was unworkable to put grass or turf there. Both are workable, but it was more practical in that position to put the natural grass because the artificial turf wasn't going to work. So I think it's thought we kind of came to that, but I, I want to make sure you're kind of comfortable. And I'm Mike, sorry. well, I want to get Mike in. Yeah. Catch you yep. Mike, I'm sorry. Excuse no, no, that's on. fine. I just suggested we take out the button is an option should be considered so that it reads it should be an option for future planners after careful evaluation, practicality, feasibility, and natural turf options. I mean, it would be also fine to say after care, after careful evaluation of practicality and feasibility of both options. You could say that. Okay. So no, I'm not. I'm not happy. With that. I mean, well, we have, no, we've we, said we, that we have, turf, we, have, we, have, we, have we have a report that documents all these issues with artificial turf, and I have a real problem saying, well, you know, they're they're both the same, so you can just kind of. Because I don't think that's true. So I guess said at the last meeting, my biggest concern is didn't want anyone doing a beeline to artificial turf. Right. I wanted them to show, I didn't say this last week, but I was like, show me your work. Right. When we started this committee, some people wanted us to do a beeline to a certain outcome. And I said, no, we're going to show the work. We're going to do the work. We're going to show that we looked at this and we looked at that and we're going to have appendices and footnotes. I and I I'm not suggesting anyone would do a beeline artificial turf, but I don't want someone just being like, "Yep, we're putting artificial turf at Poets Corner." End of story. Period. I'm just using that. Right. right. I don't want that. Show me the work. Show me why a regular field can't work there. There's her field this weekend. The decision that we made to put grass at Herd Field, brand new, not an issue with maintenance. 
You know what? There were kids at the high school playing. This is Friday. Where were the rest of the kids in Arlington? They were not on Heard Field because Heard Field was unplayable for three days. It's well, grass. Well, it's wonderful grass. That's terrific. No, it's not. Well, no, but the point I'm trying to make is your point is well taken, and that does not go against what that uh, wording says. Because somebody could do an evaluation and determine that because of the topography, the natural grass field isn't going to hold up and isn't workable, and there's nothing that you can do to change that, and in which case you may end up with a turf field. Oh, it but sounds like this is like a, this is a statement of what's already happening. Oh, I don't already, think this is a very controversial statement. My impression is this is what's already happening. And if it isn't, well, then that's another story. Because once again, I go back to I don't want anyone doing a beeline to artificial turf. If hurt field were put in front of me, I would go to a beeline to artificial turf. That's what I don't want. Stay, I know. <laughs> but sitting on this done, committee. But, but you've already done, like, the Park and Rec Commission has already done that work to say, here's why it's not practical to have grass field, right? I mean, you've got all these years of sort of examples of, well, we have that, but, and that's, yeah. and I guess that, and that's where I'm coming from, that's where I come down. Yeah. We have years of experience yeah. because all the park and rec commission fields are grass yet. Yeah. So it's, it's more of just like, you know, just show us what that is. Don't just be like, because I told you so. But it sounds like you already, like that data probably already exists. And so it, it doesn't seem like it would be hard to make a case for it being impractical or practical. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, um, I don't know if I'm, I'm speaking. No, but this is a matter of, <laughs> frankly, self-survival, self right? Any board that comes and says, we're going to do our official turf, better show their work because we know there's going to be a lot of people in town who are going to say, and you really? Say really? I want to know why. And I'm sort of, this is save, saving that those future people from the onslaught of like, well, what, why? And it's like, well, because we said so. That can't be, that can't, this is sort of saying, show it, just show the work. But I think if we take out the but phrase, I think that may be more, you know, it, it says the same thing without the negative, which is a, what is implied with the but. It's the, yeah, the negative. So I think if you say that it should be an option for future planners in Arlington, uh, after careful yeah. evaluation yeah. of the practicality of people who that. I'm fine. I don't know if everyone else is, but I'm fine. I might be able to go. I don't think it personally is any different than what's there, but well, I, I, I would go. It with sounds it. different. Yeah. It does sound it different. It does sound different because grass is our default right now. Well, we took that sentence out, as you can see, from right. nevertheless. Right. So we're just taking the butt out, is that? And by the way, Leslie, that was a concession on my part. I do want it to be the default, but I know the rest of this committee isn't there. But, 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 but it is comes out. Or it comes out. As, as, yeah. So it's but it comes out. But it is, but it is comes out. Should be an option, you know, as an option that should be considered after the fifth round. I want the youth in our community to be out on the fields and not protecting them like they're some museum pieces. There needs to be an option. And this, I was out of town. There was a group that came in, a group of girls that had just been up playing soccer. Because on Saturday, it was 50 degrees and the kids were out there. They weren't in front of their screens. They were with family, they were with friends. They took over a section of this restaurant. They had just been playing. I came back to Arlington and heard field, our most recently renovated grass field, that is top-notch grass field, hasn't been damaged due to on the, you know, children out there playing and hasn't been beat. It's it doesn't, but it was still spongy and unplayable. 
So our kids can't get out onto any field in town on a 50 degree day. They won't be out tomorrow or Thursday or Friday of this week because by default, we do have grass fields. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say, we can put, I'll go along with putting that language in, but it's meaningless because we show them that at this time of year, our kids are in in front of screens and kids out in other communities are not. The only place they can go to play, the only place is sneaking into the construction site at the high school. And there were kids there. At, at 30, 40 degrees in the morning, at 50 degrees in the afternoon, that's the only place that those kids were out playing. So I'm fighting hard for that vision. The butt is out. I'll go along with the fact that the butt is out. But, but um, I want to make sure that, that the option is there without a lot of, with, with thoughtful, the things that exist in those bullets that, that we worked so hard to make sure, you know, the, the, the things that lay out um, what we need to make sure that those fields are workable. Barbara, I was just going to say that if, if we take, you know, if we take, you know, what Ian said at face value, you know, he talked about a sand injection system being able to turn a field that's unplayable for three days into one that's unplayable for one. And I would want the town to consider that if we were going to be putting in a field, that there are ways of making fields more playable than our fields are now. And we haven't adopted that technology either because it didn't exist at the time or because nobody knew about it. I'd certainly never heard about this before. And I would want to have that considered before we lay down the grass, you know, a turf cover. Robin's fun part. You saw the pictures. Ian's, Ian's. Right. They came up. They did that. That's a grass field that is unplayable. It's. But there's no sand injection up there. Yeah, that's all I, mean, I mean, that's that's just you know, <laughs> I mean, well, sand injection thing works to greatly increase your drainage and keeps the field from being a sponge for that one. Well, and perhaps at her, that's the case. Robbins is different. But I'm saying I want things considered before we just lay down a plastic cup. And I don't think that's an unreasonable position given the body of the report. You know, I understand we want kids to play. I guess I would also, you know, as a health and safety guy, take a little bit of exception with, you know, characterizing kids as museum pieces. Because no, no, the fields is museum pieces. Oh, piece. well, okay, fine. No, her and field was a museum piece. I was, I was probably. It was not the kids. I would say David Morgan trying to get it. Fields was the museum piece. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. I see yeah. David Morgan trying to get it. Okay, uh, David, not sure if you can unmute yourself. Thanks, Jim. Um, I feel like, I feel like the thought went out of my head as soon as you said my name, to be honest. <laughs> We've got time. We jump back at any time you want, David, so. Yeah, yeah, maybe, give me, give me two seconds and I'll come back okay, to we'll you. Come back. I, I'm just, you know, I think we've reached agreement. The test will be next week after we actually see it on paper, but, hey. I actually think we're all kind of more in agreement than it sounds like we are. Maybe we're not, but I actually think we all know the process here. I just, I'm seeing it from someone who's not very connected. You know, we're all very, we're on a town board, some of us are in town meeting, we're on other town boards. I'm thinking of someone who shows up at a meeting, I'm hoping this would never happen, right? But shows up at a meeting, park and rec, and said, it's just because everyone in park rec knows all these things already. Just kind of, you know, does very matter of fact. We know a we know grass field won't work here. We, we should only be looking at artificial turf because we know the history. And some of the audience is saying, well, I don't know the history. Well, I don't know. I don't know what you know. I haven't been doing this for a while. Please show me the work. Show me the work. Show me why it won't work here. And I think this just ensures 
and I hate to use this phrase, right? But it keeps the boards honest, right? Show the work to the people who have the questions when they show up at these things. Um, and I think if you show the work, and you, Leslie, you guys do the work, you know, you have the history, you have it, but you just, you know, this ensures that <clears throat> I know there never would be a true beeline. But it, to the person on the I'm screen who shows, <laughs> I'm looking at Leslie. He is there. Well, I don't know. I heard Phil. Maybe there would be. I don't know. But um, but I'm, on but, the B line in certain places. But but for someone who comes in who doesn't have that history, like they want to know why why not a why not a natural grass here? And I just want whatever board is making that decision on that night to say, here's why. Here's why we've looked at this. We've looked at this. We've tried that. We, 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 we did this, that failed, that failed, that failed, that failed. Yes, of course we now have to consider an official turf field. And the first thing on it says, okay, maybe I agree with you, maybe I don't, but I know how you got here. Okay. <laughs> the other two things that I have um, that came to me as I was weighing the butts, um, accessibility, not access, but accessibility, it was mentioned in a discussion at a meeting, but we didn't pursue it as part of our study or report. Um, and because it didn't really fall neatly into our groups. However, the main concern of the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board is the ability of children with disabilities and parents and friends to do the same things as able-bodied people do. Now, there is a letter of the law and a spirit of the law. Within our public recreation spaces and facilities, we are trying to support diversity, equity, and inclusion and work toward enhancing these in the projects that we undertake. Among other materials, grass is not considered to be an accessible service. And I think that needs to be noted somewhere. Is artificial turf considered an accessible surface? Yes. By the same organization? Yes, the Massachusetts Architect Group. And we have this. If you want to send us some draft yes. language, we'll consider. And then that, that would lead also to the PIP. That's exactly right. P, the PIP, the safety surfacing in playgrounds, the PIP surface yep. walkways. Loose fill is not considered accessible. So mulch in playgrounds as a safety surface is a safety, is considered a safety surface as long as it is so thick and it gets replenished and yada yada. Recording place is a safety surface that is accessible, accessible. Trying to put a wheelchair over grass or over wood chips is not that's the point. Yes. I think it's an important point. Um you have some language you want yeah. I mean, not extensive. I don't want to I would say the older section of this but this is this is the language that I'd submit to you. The main concern of the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board is the ability of children with disabilities and parents and friends to do the same things as able bodied people do. We know and I'll send that yeah, just email. Okay. Okay. I think okay. we want to be careful about rubber surfaces in general, though, because I think we have a comment before about the playgrounds, and I, no, I want to not say we, we didn't have that discussion. Right. We're not going there. There's nothing in here about... Okay. Good. That's why I say, among other materials, grass is not considered to be an accessible surface. I'm not bringing playgrounds into it. I'm not bringing these other things into it, but it's not... Grass is not accessible. I think I do think it's a point that I just want to make sure it's out there that it's under yeah, that's a really good point. And then public man land management report. I mean, we talked briefly. Um, it was in our most recent discussion. And again, I think, you know, it just, because we didn't deal with health, safety, or environment, um, one of the recommendations that is in that public land management report that was published just last year, is that we should consider converting natural grass fields to artificial turf. So how do we reconcile the recommendation in the public land management report with what we're saying? 
I'd be interested in how they came up with that and what they looked at. They looked at all of the public land in our no, and I'm best saying, practices. Right, saying, David will David will yeah. David, David's back. David's back because he <laughs> David, is that what you were gonna talk about? I know exactly what I'm going to talk about this time. So public land right. <laughs> um, arrived at the decision to consider conversion of artificial, sorry, natural grass fields to artificial turf at the request of the park and rec and recreation uh, stakeholders in that working group. And uh, it also recommended considering conversion of traditionally managed fields to organically managed fields at the request of the Conservation Commission, uh, among others. I forget exactly the stakeholders involved <clears throat> in that conversation off the top of my head. So um, it makes both recommendations. And I think that that conclusion is consistent with the findings here that do not rule out the conversion of the types of fields that we have to any other type of uh, infrastructure or management regime insofar as we satisfy the sort of criteria that we've outlined in the report. So it seems to me that these are perfectly reconcilable. I just I don't see a conflict in the first place. So David, let me just to summarize. I think what you're saying is that in your reading of the public lands, I'm going to get it wrong. Management. Thank you, management report, um, that you're seeing recommendations for both organically managed natural grass turf as well as a recommendation for artificial turf. And so you think that they're sort of similar in what our report is saying? Uh, I, would, I would phrase that somewhat differently. So I messed I, it up. Sorry. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the thing Leslie's focused on with the recommendation to convert from uh, natural turf to artificial turf fields, I don't think that there's a conflict with the report that we're issuing here because the recommendation of the public land management plan is simply to consider it. And I think this report gives us guidance about how we would consider it. And you know, it really walks us through the dimensions of um, a proposal and what the pros and cons of that proposal might be. So rather than being in conflict with the public land management plan, I see this report as very complementary. You know, it, it gives us a way forward for decision making about whether or not we do make those conversions. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, I'll I only sure. add that again we come back to site specific issues yeah. that uh, I think is key to this report as well as public lands report where they're saying consider rather than you must or you should. I agree. Yeah. So I think we, I mean, we don't reference that in our report. And I think David said it well. Okay. I thought we do work. We talked about it. We talked about it, but we haven't made the change yet in. I don't. Know, I didn't know whether it was going into the draft in any way. It was in the minutes. It was in the minutes, but I don't know. It's not in the draft yet yeah. because I didn't make. Okay, but I think that what David said. Yes, I got that. That's why we're is good. Fine. Yeah. All right. Good. I'm good. Good. You sure? Good. Uh, I'm, I'm, not I'm not good. That, I'm not good. I'll start video here. I'm not good that our kids <laughs> haven't been able to get out on our fields, and everyone else can. I'm not good. There should be an option for those youth in the community. Get away from the streets. Get outside. It's 50 degrees. Or, um, Beyond good. <laughs> I'm really happy with it. No, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm, okay. Well, I want to say, Marvin, you're, you're kind of. No, I, 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 I have known Leslie for a long time, and I respect her as a person. Um, and you may <laughs> occasionally go like, through just ever so slightly on some stuff. But it's, it's all good. It's all good. I mean, you know, before I go to Mike, I'll say we all, we, I'm sure, I'm sure none of us would say that this is exactly where they 100% are. Yeah. I can tell you this report isn't where I am 100%. Right. Mike, I could run through a series of things that I wish were in there. 
Right. The default it. language. I, this committee, I think I was the lone voice. I wanted something like Brookline that said certain fields, if you had artificial turf, could not be allowed for anyone under eighth grade or something. No one else bought into that. So I walked away from it. But I understand everyone's had to make some concessions along the way for a report that the because I really didn't want a minority report here. And I don't think we're going to have one, but I think ultimately, you know, I'm always willing to hear people out. Can I interject for one second? Joe Conley, um, I just got a notice that says that there's another meeting starting in 10 minutes on this Zoom. Are we going to get kicked off? I'm not saying it's your meeting. I thought we could run two meetings at the same time on the same Zoom. <laughs> I just want to be mindful. Joe, I don't know if you know. Okay, good job, Joe. Thanks. Well, let's see what Mike does. All right, Mike, your turn. <laughs> I, I have nothing more to add at this point. Uh, anyone at home? Joe, David, Joe Barr looks like he had to leave. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that we have a fairly broad range of constituencies on this committee. And if we can come together with something that we can all sign off on, um, I think that's really important because, yeah, we could, we could have had seven or eight different reports, and I don't think that would have done anybody any good. No, because um, each each side right, was cited right. with the minority right. report and right. the alternate right. report that they and, do. And I think, yeah. you know, and I think that the fact that we, you know, we, we come from, you know, really kind of <clears> opposite ends <throat> of the spectrum in some area. Um, if we can come together as a committee and, and reach consensus on stuff, I think that that is a really important thing for people who will be leading this committee because this this isn't like a hit piece from either side. And I think that that's really important. Well, if you watch my comments to the select board, I guess a week ago, um, you know, one of the select board members said, hopefully I'm not getting this wrong, Susan, uh, great report. Little, little more against turf than I would have liked, but uh, you showed me the work. I love the footnotes. I was able to, you know, that's kind of the reaction. Even if it's not, if someone reads this and it's not where they necessarily began, they trust that we did the work. We show the work. We show how we got where we are. And I think we give people the credibility to try to follow whatever project, whatever decision makers follow, I think a pretty good set of, um, Guideposts we're putting down. Um, so Tasha, you haven't said that, but I guess I you're also, doing so much darn work over here. I think it's also a really good document for um, you know, if, if a town meeting member were to read this document cover to cover, which maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, I think it is a really good place and it gives a lot of really good resources for folks to go to continue to get information about this. Um, and I and I just think that the, that we've done a really, really good job, and we've come a really long way. And I'm I'm very proud of um, the work that we've done, and and the committee. And we've had our challenges. We have definitely had our challenges, but um, you know, I, I do think that this is a, a an amazing document that town meeting members can also fall back on and say, "Wow, okay, this committee really did um, the work that we hoped it would do through through the charges of of the folks that." Um, you know, put this forward. So, so a word about future scheduling. Um, if there's no more feedback, um, Natasha and I will take everything we heard tonight, everything we heard from the last meeting, try to get it all. We've already started, we're pretty yeah. far along. Um, something out to the committee and with the agenda on Friday. It's going to be a mad dash, but I think we'll make it. Um, we're scheduled to meet again next Tuesday. That may be subject to change, but let's we're still gonna aim for Tuesday at five. It can be a back to a virtual meeting. Um, you know, if we've done our job well, it will be a relatively short meeting. You'll see what we did, you'll see that it incorporates what we've discussed. We won't have hidden the ball on anything, and you'll see, yes, good, 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 good. Maybe we have one or two items to just iron out, and we can do that in real time. Yeah. On a draft of a screen, but hopefully we proceed to a final vote short soon after that meeting begins hopefully or you know within an hour um jumping ahead for a second just because and we can talk about this next week but just we have a minute or two so we will submit it you know then natasha and i will just 
try to get it all in shape. Just a myth and value of love. And you have our promise now, we will not make any substantive change. We may make formatting changes, we may make correct typos, change, you know, change, you know, whatever, but nothing substantive. And if we ever did, we would reconvene, but our goal would be at that point just you give us sort of uh, administrative powers to get it in a form that could be submitted. Um, we get it to town meeting, the town would well, submit it to the town moderator and select like, and then the idea would be we would discuss with the town moderator an appropriate night for us to do a committee report. And it would be a not a real report, it would be a PowerPoint presentation summarize the report, which of course we would share with all of you before we do it. So you're comfortable with whatever we're saying and how we represent the committee that night. Probably just be Natasha and me up there doing the slides. But I would like each of you, whenever we find out what night it will be, come because I want you all there if you can be. And um, it isn't virtual, it's only in person town meeting. So if you can be there, I love to recognize you for your work. Stand up, each of you. Um, so stay tuned. I don't know, it's up, it's up to the town monitor when he can fit us in, but it could be as early as uh, probably not the first night, no. uh, but you know, it could be as early as what, the April 30th, or probably more likely first or second week of May, uh, one of the Mondays or Wednesdays. So, because um, I think you all deserve the credit, not just us. I mean, Everyone was part of this, and you should be recognized for this work. There may be some sections that I have to reach out to you. About. Oh, yes, the most important. So there are a few sections where we have. So I think the most important thing. I need to give you a huge shout out to Jill and Marvin yes. for doing over Easter weekend huge work for us in terms of doing a site check. Um, which Natasha, I just did not have time to go through ninety five sites and make sure each of the links work, and mm -hmm. they supported whatever they were saying. Um, and you guys did it, and you did it in record time, and I'm so grateful from the bottom of my heart uh, that you jumped into this and turned it around so quickly, because it's freed up time for us to focus on other things. Having said that, there were proved not many, but a few of the links didn't work. A few of the things we cited didn't necessarily support what they were cited, not many. Uh, and in one or two cases, there was something we flagged where there should be a site and there wasn't. So, you know, we're talking maybe about a dozen things. And it could be my fault, too, that I got the wrong link in there. So I'm probably going to reach out. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Well, I'm 95 sites, you know. So, yeah. so Natasha may reach out to you over the next 24 hours, each of you, potentially, or all of you, uh, to quickly say, you know, here, I need new sites for these, or I need new links. If she reaches out to you, or if I reach out to you, you can turn that around lickety split like 24 hours or less given where we are um i don't think that's an issue but i just i don't want anyone to walk away from there email for the next three days i'm not going to don't have no more to say yeah yeah <laughs> so anything else new business okay well we'll do this one more time before we go well. to adjourn mr chairman is there a second second Okay, and then Joe is second. Okay, we're going to write down uh, Mike. Yes. All right, Marvis. Yes. Leslie. Yes. Jill. Yep. Jim. Yes. Natasha. Yes. Uh, Joe Barr is not present. We, we are six. Zero. We can adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. And, and thank all the people for coming yes. out. It's, you know, I mean, it's ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.